What's up, my ladies, my fellas? That was Tobacco, Crepe, Aerosmith, featuring Beck. I'm Wilson, Counter Talk ND, with me every Thursday, 4 o'clock, I get in here, 420, open a big bag of cannabis news, and I can assure you this is happening today. We've got a lot to talk about. I feel like I'm a sportscaster recapping the games, and these games are the cannabis measures that were voted on Tuesday. And we've got some good news and some bad news, but... Uh, the old march towards cannabis legalization will never stop. We will never sleep. We believe in it. We believe cannabis should be legalized. I believe cannabis was created by God himself, the main man, the, the person responsible for creating everything that we see, to use as we see fit. And I worship the man upstairs every Thursday, every Thursday. I think I said that last week. Every Sunday, 11 a.m., worship Antioch Church, 417 Main Avenue, I'm on stick duty. I'm a little nervous. I haven't been feeling great, so I haven't been practicing like I should. So, you know, I mean, it'd be like animal with only one arm. Can I talk and deal with Wilson? Let's let's stay focused, shall we? Right before me, side stage with Trav, one to three. Can I talk and deal with Wilson? That's me. Four to five. After me is usually stinky art. But no stinky today. But next Thursday, I feel like the uh, studio will have the uh, pungent smell of of cheese gone bad and that means stinky arts music mart will be here next week but let's not for let's not forget what we're talking about we're talking about cannabis legalization uh north dakota had a cannabis legalization measure on the ballot uh we'll talk about that in depth at 420 but for you guys for for one of you that don't know it didn't pass and it passed it didn't pass with you know like a, like about nine percent so I think it was like 45% and 54% against. And uh, we'll talk about that as to why it didn't pass. And there there's some particulars that, you know, that certainly didn't help. And so we'll talk about that at 420. Uh, there are other states. We've got uh, Arkansas, Missouri, Maryland, and South Dakota, our brother from another mother. South Dakota also didn't pass. Uh, a lot of people believe it's just that midterm midterm blahs you know nobody votes on the midterms and so that's kind of apparent and like i was talking to my friend at lunch today stoners have a trouble have a, have a trouble getting up off the couch sometimes and so the percentage of cats who were just smoking instead of voting might be higher than you think but anyway we talk about cannabis legalization, the benefits of cannabis, and we're going to do that here. This show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy, blackcottagealchemy.com, Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook, or you can uh, strap a couple skis on those big fat feet ears and come downtown to Tochi Products, and the body butter will be in there. I believe colloidal silver is also in there. There's some candles from Black Cottage Alchemy. Pick up some of those, would you? But the butter, it's made with kosher, full-spectrum CBD, North Dakota-grown hemp seed oil, 1,600 bigs of CBD, mango butter, shea butter, cocoa butter, coconut oil, myrrh, frankincense, sage, and ylang ylang, neuropathy, pain, inflammation, eczema is all helped by this. Psoriasis, diaper rash, dry and irritated skin, all that stuff is made better with the body butter. Thank you, Black Cottage Alchemy, for sponsoring Canada Talk and D with Wilson. Uh, blah, Black Ring Ritual wraps up your evening tonight, and then we have sandwiched in between a few hours of uh, automation with my boy Fred, spelled with a P. Okay, Canada Talk and D on Instagram. I post uh, every once in a while up there. And so uh, if you have, if you follow me there, then when things happen, I can post. All right. And I don't know if you guys are here in Fargo Moorhead, but this weather is poopy today. I barely got here. I'm not feeling well. Uh, some city slicker stole my umbrella. And I don't know about umbrellas or about you and umbrellas, but that, you know, when there's stuff coming down, uh, you know, from the sky that's wet and it kind of makes me uncomfortable and, you know, kind of just icky. An umbrella would help. So I almost didn't even walk over here because, you know, I don't have an umbrella. But I knew you guys wanted to hear about cannabis and what the votes were like. And, you know, so I thought, well, I better come in and tell everybody we lost. <laughs> However, unless you live under a rock, everybody knows that North Dakota did not pass the cannabis recreational measure. Uh, again, it got 45 percent of the votes. Uh, Cass County was 53 percent. So again, if if North Dakota was only Cass County, we'd have cannabis like we, we would have had it legalized in 2018. I mean, we got over 50 percent there, too. Um, 
And it's just, you can, we can argue all day long as to why, you know, the conservative western part of the state, you know, an agricultural part of the state, you would think would understand growing cannabis. But uh, anyway, I have faith and I'm not down. Nobody should be out. I mean, get you some Delta 8. That's still legal. Just kidding. Can I talk indeed with Wilson? At 420, we'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news. But until then, why don't we play a little music for you, huh? I believe we've got there. And the name of this band is just fun to say. Pomplamoose. Lord. Back mashup. 95.9. Yes, indeed. Lord Tupac. Tupac. I said Tupac. That's right. Back mashup. Pomplamoose. That's a lady and a man making music out of their garage or shed, depending on what you want to call it. Kind of talking to you with Wilson. That's what you're listening to here at KRWF 95.9 LPFM. RadioFreeFargo.org is streaming everywhere in this big old green and blue marble. So if you're anywhere in the green and blue marble, why don't you listen to the best radio station as far as I'm concerned? Listen to it. Listen to it. Listen to me. Kind of talking to you with Wilson. At 420, we'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news. Measure 2 was voted on in the state of North Dakota on Tuesday. Uh, the only there was two measures measure one it was term limits and that passed which i believe term limits has been on a uh, a ballot uh, quite a few times so this i think is the first time that it's passed and now i uh, i think that's a good thing but because the state's so small sometimes it's hard to find people to fill the positions and so then you get somebody you like then you got to tell them to jump because you know we voted for term limits <laughs> But whatever, y'all, whatever. We're talking about cannabis here on this show. We're talking about cannabis. Now, measure two lost, and I'm going to give you some stats by my boy, Mr. Anderson. Thank you, sir, for keeping me apprised as we went along here. Measure two lost by 23,544 votes. Four years ago in 2018, Cass County casted 24,000 more votes. Grand Forks casted 10,000 more votes. Biz casted 10. Minot casted 8. All in all, 86,000 less people voted. Early voting was way down, and the number of polling places was slashed, which is interesting, folks, by almost 75%. Most yes votes come from urban areas like Fargo and Grand Forks, and like I said, we did pass it in, the, in Cass County. I don't know about Grand Forks. I didn't look because I don't live there. Grand Forks stinks. You know, what do I call it? Grand Fentanyl Forks. Just kidding. The established knows this, and it's the reason they cut numbers from 38 polling places to 10 in Cass. Same was true in Grand Forks. Now, why did they do that? You know, you get the most people in the state congested in those particular counties, wouldn't you have? Why would you have less polling places? You know, I don't get it. So, and it's just boring, you know? It's just boring. Uh, but thanks to all those who waited in line for two hours, there were people at the Fargo Dome who were there until 9 p.m. people when the polls closed at 7. You shouldn't have to wait 90 minutes to vote in low turnout election. It discourages people not to show up. Uh, Mr. Anderson says we improved over 2018, but it's not enough. We needed 4.95% more yes turnouts. And he thinks any gap has to be closed during a high turnout presidential race. That's why South Dakota is struggling. People don't, people didn't change their mind. It was an uncompelling midterm. And he's right about that. And he's right about that. So don't get discouraged. We'll vote again. And ain't nobody laying down. We got too many head shops for us to lay down. Feel me? Programming on KRWF 95.9 LPFM has been underwritten by Rough Cut Social. They are Fargo's ultimate entertainment destination for axe throwing. Enjoy fun with family and friends, a stellar team building excursion, or book your party. Rough Cut comes complete with a full beer, wine, and soda bar for your perfect time out. They're located at 1100 NP Avenue, Suite 102 in Fargo. Check out roughcutsocial.com for more info. Now, we're going to jump back into some music. This is like seven and a half minutes long, so get comfortable. And on the other side of this, we'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news because it'll be 420. Here's Circle Around the Sun, Outer Bird. Outer burrows circles around the sun. And that was groovy here at Kind of Talk Indie with Wilson. Every Thursday I get in here, 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news, and that's happening right now. So the intro is going to happen, I think, right now. There it is. Okay, well, get your long glass cylinder. If you got a medical card, get some ice and put it in there. Get you a combustible tool. And we'll talk about cannabis right on the other side of this. On KRWF 95.9, RadioFreeFargo.org. Hey, it's Phil from Canaheads. Like this episode? Hit that like button. 
And if you enjoy the show, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on cannabis news local and national. Listen live on 95.9 in the Fargo, North Dakota region from 4 to 5 p.m. on Thursday. For our non-Fargo region friends, you can listen on your favorite podcast platform. Just search Canatalk ND with Wilson. Now enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? You guys doing okay? It's Cannabis Talk. We're going to talk about cannabis. I'm Wilson. Kind of talking to you with Wilson. It's 420. We just come off of a election cycle. So I've got information regarding that. And Whoa. What was that? I don't know. I just accidentally hit something. All right. Well, whatever. We're just going to keep moving. But measure two, that's what was happening in North Dakota. Uh, it got rejected. It didn't pass. And I'm going to tell you a little more about that. Uh, there was 107 yes votes for 45%. And then their no's were 130, 54.95%. So, so what is that? About 9% spread. And when you think about the, the sensitive topic of cannabis, which if you know, you know, you know, it's not dangerous. But ignorance just is just enveloped around cannabis legalization and scare tactics. You know, I'd like to say, well, everybody's smarter than these stupid scare tactics. Nobody buys all this children in danger, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is, especially in North Dakota, it matters. And it did matter. You know, I mean, and I guess at the end, there was a flurry of negative dogmatic influence on the radio and such i i don't have any social media and i don't listen to the radio so i wasn't aware of it but it happened and uh, apparently it affected and like i read in the first segment stinking they went from like a hundred polling uh the areas down to like 10 and it was hard to vote i went to the civic everything was groovy there there's no waiting in line you know but the fargo dome apparently it was two hours in some cases and when you have like a boring you know election cycle where nothing fun's being voted on however i would argue the cannabis is pretty fun but whatever we're going to talk about the negatives and we're going to talk about the positives there were a lot of cities in the states that voted for decrim uh and there are some wins uh out of the five states legalizing you know up for a legalizing cannabis vote two of them still passed so that's you know that's that's something we're now at what 21 states have legal cannabis for recreation and it's just like i mean are the other 29 states stupid you know are they the are not stupid are they the smart ones you know do we keep whittling at the smart states to decide to vote cannabis legally i doubt it i it's just we ain't wrong when we say cannabis is good but if I say cannabis is bad and it'll eat holes in your kids' brains and if you even smell it, you'll turn into a bat, well, I mean, who's going to vote for that? Nobody wants to turn into a bat. I don't. I mean, maybe I would. But enough of that. Let's talk about cannabis. Cannabis legalization and the benefits of cannabis here in the state of North Dakota. Can I talk in D with Wilson? We'll bring you this little news bit ganjapreneur single texas mom facing eviction for medical cannabis and federally subsidized apartments basically section eight and i don't know that you know if anybody knows because i mean personally subsidizing happens within the state of north dakota but apparently it's federally regulated i didn't know that i mean i think i did but i'm not on section eight and anytime i've ever been in section eight apartments i'd been up a few weeks i I don't know. I mean, uh, there certainly wasn't a piece of paper on the door outside uh, all the subsidized apartments I did meth in that said, these are federally regulated. Don't try to do cannabis in here medically, you know. But anyway, Texas single mother Candace McCarty of Temple is facing eviction for possessing and consuming medical cannabis in her federally subsidized apartment. Uh, she is a patient in the state's limited medical cannabis program, and she faces a looming eviction because she receives housing assistance through the federally funded Central Texas Housing Consortium. Last year, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development clarified that even if an individual is prescribed medical cannabis through a state program, they are still not allowed to use or possess cannabis at home if they receive federal housing. Uh, McCarty says she was not aware of the rule, assuming her use of THC gummies, cannabis oil, and smokable CBD cannabis were allowed because the cannabis was permitted by the state of Texas. I know why should McCarty overthink it? 
You know, Barbara Bozone, you know, the clown's cousin, executive director, she pointed out that McCarty's lease says any drug use is not allowed and that their lease is subject to termination for any drug activity. But stinking that Barbara Bozone is the problem. It's a plant. It's a stinking plant. Plants are allowed anywhere. Can you have a carrot? Then you can have a plant. We, we got to really, really get the scheduling off of this thing. You know, it, it grows in a garden. It's, it's unadulterated. Now, some things we could argue now, you know, that you get it in a lab and people start messing with it. You can maximize its potential, but it's still naturally just growing, you know. And we can talk about, you know, like potency limits and all that stuff. But I say pick your poison, and that's the beauty of, you know, where cannabis is nowadays. Some people need it strong. Others don't. I personally don't. I uh, I like low THC CBD. Like a, I like a one and one like a one, one, one half CBD, the other half THC. Because I don't, I don't really want to be hiding behind my couch, but I don't really want to be, you know, hiding behind the counter at a Barnes & Noble. Do they even have those? Doesn't matter. When they pulled the couches out, I stopped going there. Anyway, she, McCarty, however, says she believes the lease was not clear. Of course she doesn't. Noting that it says residents cannot engage in any drug-related criminal activity on or off the authority premises. The term drug-related criminal activity means the illegal manufacture, sale, distribution, use, or possession with the intent to manufacture, sell, pop, 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 pop. McCarty moved to Texas two years after Hurricane Laura and wishes she would have known about the restrictions. Guess how they found out? She was reported by her neighbor. Stinking neighbor. Man, the neighbors are a problem, you know? How come they're not reporting when there's child abuse? Man, some of them are, but everybody knows social workers get really frustrated because of all the abuse that's happening and there's nothing you can do about it. At the end of the day, they, they end up going back home to their parents. We're abusing them. All right, well, let's keep cruising. Uh, cannabis moment. Minnesota senators signal plans to advance cannabis legalization in 2023 with new Democratic majority. So the prospects of legalizing cannabis in Minnesota improved significantly on Tuesday with voters flipping the state Senate, and giving Democrats majorities in both chambers. Now, remember stinking Paul Gazelka? He was a big fat problem in Minnesota. He gone. He gone, y'all. So that's that's a win. That's a win. And we're right by Minnesota. Right by Minnesota. So I would dare say we're a hop, skip, and a bike ride over to Minnesota. So that's that's a win. That's a win. Uh, here's another one. Cannabis moment. Wisconsin voters approve cannabis ballot questions in cities and counties across the state. Wisconsin voters in three counties and five municipalities across the state made their voices heard. And on Tuesday through non-binding advisory questions on their local ballots. So there was a total of nine local reform measures qualified for the ballot across the right jurisdictions. Governor Tony Evers, who was reelected on Tuesday, is pushing lawmakers to pass legalization to allow citizens to put policy reform measures on the statewide ballot. Uh, here's the text of the local ballot questions that were before voters this year. Uh, Dane County, should cannabis be legalized, taxed, and regulated in the same manner as alcohol? Dane County approved it. Dane County, should all records of previous convictions be expunged? Boom. Eau Claire County, should cannabis be legalized for adult use by Wisconsin residents at least 21 years of age? Approved. Milwaukee County, do you favor allowing adults 21 years and old to engage in the personal use of uh, cannabis? Yes, 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 yes. So, in Dane County, voters previously approved a series of medical and adult use legalization questions. So, that's uh, so uh, basically, Wisconsin Cannabis Activist Network says the stages are set for the general election on November 8th. We have documented that, 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 so that is good news. So, Minnesota, Wisconsin, all very close to us. Cannabis moment. Now, here's a, here's a negative. South Dakota Cannabis Legalization Ballot Initiative defeated by voters. Uh, no votes were 183. Yes, votes were 163. So that's 52% no, 47% yes. That's, oh, sorry, South Dakota. But they'll keep pushing. Man, I mean, that Matthew guy, he's uh, he's on point. He ain't going to he ain't gonna sleep. He ain't going to bed. He's going to stay awake. So, so sorry, South Dakota. And uh, they'll get him next time, right? They'll get them next time. So, of course, we got North Dakota. It also re, uh, Voters also rejected cannabis legalization. Uh, we'll talk about that just a little bit because I've mentioned it in the uh, other. But uh, 54% no, 45% yes. It was like 23,000 signatures against it, pushed it over the top. 
So let's keep going now. Let's talk about Missouri. Missouri voters now, they approve cannabis legalization initiative. So let's give Missouri for passing cannabis legalization a hand. Now, they have good news. Now, people will argue. Here's the thing. Um, two states. Well, certainly Arkansas. Arkansas, I mean, I dare I say, just too hillbilly to pass cannabis. You know, they just... Arkansas. Let's just say that. But I've read and what I've read, people didn't want even pro cannabis people didn't want Arkansas's cannabis measure to pass. It just it was horrible. It was uh, set up to, you know, create money for the major corps. None for the people. You know, there wasn't any equity, you know. So a lot of people wished Missouri's Amendment 3 did not pass. People wish that it didn't. You know, pro-cannabis activists in the state of misery were not happy that it passed. You know, so that's another thing that we have to keep in, you know, keep in consideration. Just because there's an amendment for cannabis legalization doesn't mean that it should be voted on. It doesn't mean it's a good one. And as we go along and you come up with ways to get your cannabis, you know, you come up with ways to use alternatives. I mean, with all the deltas popping up, you know, maybe we have patience to wait. You know, maybe we can wait for the best measure. You know, maybe uh, the regulator, or regulators, the legislators in the session might come up with something in North Dakota. I doubt it. But uh, we got that Ruby cat. He's a rep. You know, so, you know, things are looking good. Now, Missouri, like I said, they, they didn't really, because here's the thing. Legal Missouri 2022 is behind the measure, and the campaign has worked for months to convince voters to pass it, despite criticism from certain cannabis reform activists and prohibitionists alike. See, so... There are people that are pro-cannabis that didn't vote for these measures, even in North Dakota. You know, for whatever reason, you know, now the home grow in North Dakota had me hook, line, and seeker. I, I wouldn't have seen any negatives because I want to grow. I got a closet just begging me. Every night that closet's like, did we pass? Are you going to be able to grow with me, you know, Wilson? You going to be able to grow with me? I'm like, no, closet, shut up. I mean, why I've got a closet that can even talk is beyond me. I mean, any of you all got a talk at closet? Oh, man, I can't really get rid of it because it's connected to my apartment. But anyway, let's talk about Missouri. Amendment three. The yes was nine hundred eighty seven thousand and fifty three percent. No's were eight hundred sixty eight thousand and forty six percent. So that's that's a lot of signatures, people. But Missouri got it. And so did Maryland. Maryland voters approved cannabis. Let's look at this. Yes was 965,000, so 65% yes for Maryland. 34% a big fat no. I mean, and that's East Coast, you know, and they're like, bring it. I mean, but again, there's, we're talking over a million, you know, 1.4 million votes counted, you know. And so shout out to Maryland. Shout out to Missouri. Hang in there, South Dakota. Hang in there, North Dakota. We ain't out yet. We're going to still push. No, Nobody's going, like I said, nobody's taking our toys and going home. It's just a minor setback. And we've been pushing since 2018, 2016. We've got medical. It's not great. But, I mean, I, even, my, even my pastor was a little bit surprised the Measure 2 didn't pass. He, he, I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't want to say he's warming it, warming up to the idea that it's not, you know, it's not strictly sin in nature. There are some, you know, it's a natural, it's a natural plant that's growing that has benefits that shouldn't be regulated by the man. You know, it should just be, nobody tells me how many carrots I can have in my fridge. You shouldn't be able to tell me what, you know, medicine, what I, what I use in, in my day to day that makes me a better person and just just to you know crest the stress crest the stress that's right i said it so now let's talk about other things here texas voters in five cities approve america i almost said that m word texas voters in five cities approve cannabis decrim ballot initiatives uh texas voters in five cities approved local cannabis decrim so i wonder what that even means but ground game put cannabis decrim on ballots in five Texas cities. Uh, San Marcos was 81% yes. Elgin was 75% yes. Well over the 50%. So Texans have shown that they want major cannabis law reforms in Texas via polling and now at the local ballot box. However, uh, we got Greg Abbott. He's not, a, he's not big into it. 
He uh, incorrectly suggested that lawmakers have already adopted the policy statewide. He doesn't believe people should be incarcerated over low-level cannabis possession. None of us do. So House Speaker Dade Fallon said in September that he'll work to enact criminal justice reform in the 2023 session. So shout out to Texas voters. Uh, here we got, uh, this is interesting, and I'm not even sure what I'm talking about here. We'll, we'll get through it together. This is from MJ Biz Daily. Federal court tosses Delta 8 THC lawsuit out against Kansas governor. Now, I thought this was a pro-cannabis article, and I'm not sure. Federal judge, he threw out a lawsuit against Kansas governor. So I guess they don't get to, so I guess the governor and the attorney general have got no consequences to this. But apparently they threw $120,000 worth of Delta 8. They destroyed it by the police. Federal judge decided it was legal. According to the Law 360, U.S. District Judge Catherine Viderenal ruled Tuesday that the 2018 Farm Act, which legalized hemp, doesn't make selling hemp-derived products such as Delta 8 THC legal. Well, how dare you, Catherine? Murray Dines, owner of Terpene Dist and THC Rec Dispensary, yeah, I pronounce it dispensary, Filed a lawsuit in June challenging the Attorney General Derek opinion that it was illegal to sell Delta 8 THC products in the state. Schmidt wrote in a December 2021 opinion that impairing hemp products are illegal. Uh, Dines Topeka store was raided in April. Uh, filed suit against the Attorney General. The governor asked in July to be removed from the lawsuit, arguing she has no connection to enforcement of the challenged prison criminal statutes. I mean, they, they, they always do. I mean, politicians suck. They always want to be removed. They'll start problems and then ask to be removed for whatever reason, you know. In dismissing the suit, the judge wrote that in short, no part of the 2018 Farm Act demonstrates an unmistakable focus to benefit plaintiff or other unlicensed possessors and sellers of hemp products. Quote, the 2018 Farm Act does not create a private right for plaintiffs to possess and sell hemp and hemp products, either under Section 1983 or as an implied cause of action under the 2018 Farm Act itself. Now, I don't like how that sets the precedent. You know, I really don't. But uh, let's keep going here. Cannabis moment. You're listening to Canada Talk Indeed with Wilson. Every Thursday I get in here, 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news. Uh, it's kind of a dry segment today because I'm kind of just running over results of uh, the cannabis uh, measures that were voted on on November 8th, which was a Tuesday. Again, in recap, Measure 2 in the state of North Dakota was rejected. Uh, there were a lot of factors the midterms being boring wasn't wasn't a good a good thing for us. However, we were just a few, you know, like twenty thousand shy, still in the forty some percent range, you know. So that's that's all good news. But anyway, cannabis moment. Dozens of Rhode Island cities vote to allow cannabis businesses and sales in their jurisdiction. So again, what I'm trying to paint is it's not all bad. Give me one second, I gotta sneeze. <laughs> Sorry. What are you going to do when you got a sneeze and you're on the air? I mean, what are you going to do? Dozens of Rhode Island cities vote to allow it. So the voters in 25 cities approved local ballots. The question was placed on 33 cities with a strong majority of those agreeing to permit cannabis commerce. This comes about six months after Governor Dan McKee signed a legalization bill into law. Uh, the refer for a referendum asked shall new cannabis related licenses for businesses involved in the cultivation blah, 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 be issued in the city or town. So uh, that, it's not a guarantee that all cities that where the resolution wasn't put on the ballot will have retailers. Uh, so this is just a matter of uh, deciding where it's going to be. Now, Ohio voters, they also approved decrim ballot measures in five cities. Uh, so that's again. We're, we're getting there. So prior to the election, more than 20 jurisdictions across the state had already adopted local statutes. Uh, well, anyway, shout out to those states. And uh, we will kind of just cruise around cannabis moment here. Uh, Minnesota governor says cannabis legalization will be one of the first bills to pass with Democrats in control. Minnesota, Tim W., is already planning. He also extended an inv invitation to Ventura, a former wrestling star and a longtime cannabis reform, to the future signing ceremony once the legislator delivers a legislation bill to the current governor's desk. So the sticking point for cannabis in Minnesota were the Republicans in the House they controlled. Well, they've lost it. 
And the governor reassured me, said Ventura, that one of... Well, they've lost it now. And the governor reassured me that one of the first items that will be passed, Minnesota, get ready. Cannabis is going to have its prohibition lifted. Huh? Pretty good as a Ventura, huh? The sticking point for cannabis in Minnesota where the Republicans in the House they controlled. Well, they've lost it now. And the governor reassured me that one of the first items that will be passed, Minnesota, get ready. Cannabis is going to have its prohibition lifted. Man, I almost felt like I'm Jesse Ventura. You guys are like, what is that, Jesse Wilson, the body? Absolutely. Absolutely it is, people. So, you know, so there's those those are good signs. Wisconsin governor, he pledges to put cannabis legalization in an upcoming budget. So we're rocking, you know, Arkansas, bless their hearts. They just didn't get it. And uh, legal cannabis access tied to lower risk of lung injuries from contaminated vapes. Shout out science. Most Americans don't think cannabis is dangerous, despite prohibitionist, prohibitionist arguments. Uh, now, this is kind of funny. I read this in Cannabis Moment. Uh, it says, no, Schumer is not seeking to legalize cannabis use and sales on Amtrak. Wouldn't that be killer? I mean, could you imagine a pre-roll on Amtrak as you're looking at the uh, through the observation deck windows? Now, let me wrap up Canada Talking D with Wilson with this article. Uh, it has nothing to do with cannabis, but if you're into cannabis, this will be a trippy story to hear. Feds, that's the federal government, tells National Park visitors to stop licking psychedelic toads. Now, I'll go ahead and read that again because you're like, what did he say? The federal government is telling national park visitors to please, please, just whatever you do, please, just just have a bonfire, roast some marshmallows, and stop licking the psychedelic toads. Now, let's read a little more. Uh, The the National Park Service is cautioning people not to lick toads that secrete secrete an alkaloid to produce a psychedelic-like effects in humans. It's not clear if there's been a recent surge in trippy toad licking, but the trend is evidently common enough that the federal agency felt it warranted a warning last week. Uh, MPS said in a Facebook post on Halloween that it is a totally terrifying practice. Uh, There are several species of toads that secrete psychoactive compounds, but one of the most well-known is the Bufo alvarius, commonly called the Sonoran Desert Toad or Colorado River Toad, which NPS said is among the largest toads found in North America, measuring nearly seven inches. That's a big, fat, stinking, psychedelic toad. It makes a distinct, weak, low-pitched toot lasting less than a second. Well... Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. But it's perhaps better known for producing 5-MeO-DMT and another DMT derivative, bufotenin, which are released in glands behind the toad's eyes. For some animals, the substances can be fatal when ingested, but as humans came to learn, it can also create a psychedelic experience. It can make you sick if you handle the frog or get the poison in your mouth. As we say with most things you come across in a national park, whether it be a banana slug, unfamiliar mushroom, or a large toad with glowing eyes in the dead of the night, please refrain from licking. So, what have we learned? Measure 2 in North Dakota did not pass for cannabis legalization. And if you are in a national park attempting to lick a psychedelic toad, please don't. Okay? Not everyone licks the toads directly. Some will extract the DMT alkaloids and vaporize them, for example. Some people are licking the butt of the frog, and it's like, why are you licking its butt? They're like, well, we didn't read the whole article. Well, get your life together, all right? Get your life together. Kind of talking to you with Wilson has wrapped up another rabble-rousing hour of cannabis-focused blather. Programming on Care Double F, LPFM, Radio Free Fargo, 95.9 FM, has been underwritten by Flatland Guitar and Luthery. Flatland Guitar is your full-service guitar shop and your exclusive dealer for Yamaha, Taylor, Paul Reed Smith Guitars, and other brands. They sell guitars on, on consignment. They take trade-ins and have a full-service on-site repair center. Check out Flatland Guitar and Luthery on Facebook or visit them in person at 1450 25th Street South in Fargo. Their hours are Monday through Friday, 10 to 6, Saturdays 10 to 5, closed on the Lord's Day. Well, okay. So maybe now I play you. I play you a tune. Maybe now I play you a tune, and then we wrap up this shindig. This is "Come On In My Kitchen," Justin Johnson. You're welcome. Well, come on in my kitchen, Justin Johnson on the KRWF ninety five point nine. RadioFreeFargo.org. Can I talk indie with Wilson? That's what you've been tapped into for the last hour. 
I'm going to be shooting out of here in a few minutes. I'll be back next Thursday. Normally, Stinky Arts Music Mart is after me, but not today. Next week, hopefully, Black Ring Ritual wraps up your thirsty Thursday here. This show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy, blackcottagealchemy.com, Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook. Come on downtown to touch your products. You can get your Black Cottage Alchemy stuff in there. The body butter is what you want in your medicine cabinet. You want it. You want it in your car. It's made with kosher, full-spectrum CBDs, North Dakota-grown hemp, 1,600 MIGs to be exact, a bunch of other stuff in here. You're going to want some. It's good for foot, toe, foot fungus, tattoo aftercare, boil stretch marks, and the like. So thank you, Black Cottage Alchemy, for sponsoring this show. I don't think I have much more to say. I uh, I need to get to work. And I'm not feeling great. So I'm going to just go ahead and, you know, jump out of here a little early. I'll be back next Thursday. You can uh, you can take that to the bank. Educate yourselves on the benefits of cannabis so you can educate others on said benefits. If you're down because cannabis was not passed in the state of North Dakota, buck up. Get thick skin and keep pushing. We will never stop advocating for cannabis legalization. There's 21 states that have already done so. There has to be a reason. There's billions and billions and billions of dollars being made on a plant that's been demonized. So it's time to change this, you know, flip the script, change the plot. And we're going to do it one person at a time. So never be afraid to discuss why you think cannabis has been poorly, you know, discredited in the media for you know for a specific outcome that isn't the outcome we wanted but as i have talked ohio decrim texas decrim cities wisconsin decrim cities minnesota's almost done when it comes to legalization tim waltz has always wanted to legalize it it just he did, he had that stupid idiot paul gazelka that just refused to even vote on it when it was passed through the house wisconsin same deal so, you know, there you have it. I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you guys next Thursday. So be good to yourselves. Don't beat yourselves up. Cannabis is still moving forward. We will never, like I said, we will never turn around and bend down to the anti-cannabis regime. We refuse to. I refuse to. And I encourage everyone to also stand up to Big Pharma and people who believe Tylenol PMs would work better than a Indica. So I'm out of here. Stinky Art's no win. He'll be in next week. Black Ring Rituals at the end of the day, so stick with us. David Allen, Judgment Day. Peace.